I feel like there's a lot that goes into this more than just having to go up and just sell something. Like there has to be this strong trust building thing that has to happen in a business in order for people to really want to invest in your business, right? Right. I want you to, as you're going through this, to look confused because you're asking questions the whole yeah. time. You know, people say, oh, you need to educate the homeowner. You need to the homeowner to educate you more than you educate the homeowner. And what you're trying to get them to educate you on is the problem. All right, we got another special guest on the Real Concrete Coding Talk Pod today. I'm super excited to have him aboard. I actually first saw him uh, at the World of Concrete Summit, and the energy he put out into his presentations were absolutely phenomenal. And the best thing about it is the stuff that he's talking about, it makes sense and it's real. And so um, really the purpose of this podcast today is we're going to talk about selling we're going to talk about selling at a higher close rate. We're going to talk about mindset. We're going to talk about seasonality. We're just really going to talk about a lot of different approaches for sales on how to close these garage floors or any kind of concrete coating project for that matter. So I'm not going to take all the mic here, Chuck, but how about you go ahead and introduce yourself? Kind of like tell us a little bit about, you know, what you used to do, like what got you here mm -hmm. kind of thing, and just kind of like give us some some feedback for those who don't know who you are. Yeah, so I'm Chuck Toki. I own a company called Top Rep. Uh, it's a high performance sales training. Um, we are one of the giants for our sales training inside of home improvement. Uh, we work with a lot of the, uh, the larger organizations, national organizations, but we have a plethora of very small organizations as well. And uh, we are getting very popular inside of the floor coatings. Uh, mainly because I used to own a floor coating business. So it uh, kind of takes me back a bit. And I've been selling in the house for about 20 years now. And uh, I built some of the largest teams, starting with uh, the bath industry. So I'm one of the people that kind of helped bring a uh, bath fitter into the United States. It was already here, but, you know, to grow that, uh, that brand, if you will. Yep. And from there, got into roofing and uh, took a couple of the companies to from pretty big to the largest in the country and uh, one of them being Abel and Mr. Roof and so you know being able to do that understanding that growth and how to how to get that growth um, and at the same time I also owned or co-owned a floor coating business that uh, turned into one of the largest inside of Ohio and uh, within two years we we turned it and sold it and so, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's kind of how I got into the sales piece of it. And then from there, got into coaching. And now we work with thousands of organizations across the United States, Canada and Mexico and help them to understand sales, whether it's, you know, high ticket sales or, you know, lower ticket like floor coatings. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And thanks for that. Uh, like for real, it, like the, the biggest thing is, is I can tell that you have a passion for sales very much and it so. comes out into your presentations amazingly well you articulate it very very well and so i'm really excited to have you aboard here today i think a lot of concrete coating companies do struggle on this side of it um and you know and, and and in my opinion it's one thing to just hire an outside sales rep to do it for you because let's say you know you're hoping that they're going to be better than you at it um but the truth is you got to still have something in place and understand the process so that you can better help this person, right? Otherwise, they're just gonna fail and fall flat on their face. Right. Um, and, and from a sales background myself, I can tell you motivation is key and having like a lot of confidence is key in what you're doing. And so it's, oh, in my opinion, it's always easier for the business owner to sell higher because you're the owner. You have the highest authority, but when somebody comes in and they don't have that ownership of the business because that culture isn't built, maybe perhaps there's a lot of work that has to be done there, right? Would you agree with that? Very much so, you know, and, and floor coatings, it's, it's fun with floor coatings because either the, the person that owns the organization is a doer or a seller. Very seldomly do we get what we call the business, you know, the businessman or, or business person where they just are really good at owning businesses and they come in, they start the floor coating industry. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but those are, you, you either have the one that comes in and they were a sales rep and they want to start their own organization or they know how to install them. And so they do very, very well there, but then they have a problem selling them. And so we have to work on both sides of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and I even I've talked to many, many, many concrete con coding guys and, and a lot of them who are starting out or let's say been in it for about a year or so. They're still kind of struggling a little bit uh, and they're just like, man, if I can get in front of them, I can sell. I'm like, OK, well, that's cool. But there's a lot more to it. There's one side, like you say, like you can sell it because you know what you're talking about. You know how to install it. And so they can they can sense that. And just like pheromones, they can smell that stuff from a far like far away. They can okay. smell your confidence levels. Right. And, um, you know, they can tell whether you're desperate or not and all these different kinds of things, right? So, I mean, can you talk a little bit about branding as well and like how it all kind of ties into having a really strong um, sales pitch? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's a lot that goes into this more than just having to go up and just sell something. Like there has to be this strong trust building thing that has to happen in a business in order for people to really want to invest in your business, right? Right. You know, the sales process, the process itself has not changed all that much when it comes to what kind of process do I put in my, my business? Mm -hmm. um, but we take this, this six or seven or eight step pro program, whichever it is that you decide to have, and that just keeps the sales reps in line to make sure that they do their job. But then it's how they do that. It's how they get that point across. And so we work with a company called Rilla, Rilla Voice. Um, and we've worked with them for a number of years uh, from the time that they just started entering in and changing the industry. And they have literally changed the sales, the, the home improvement sales industry as a whole. They've completely changed it, turned it around. And what Rilla is, is it literally just takes the, the recording of everything that happens in the house, breaks it down, analyzes it, and tells you exactly what happened. But here's why it's changed things is because now we have over a half a million recordings mm -hmm. and inside of everybody's organizations, we label, are you a top rep? Are you average? Are you poor? And now we have all this data. We find out what are these top reps doing to win so often? And we've taken that and to, to really bring it into the more modern way of selling. And here's some of the things that, that, have come out of this first thing that came out was top reps speak half as fast so slow it down in the house because when you're speaking so fast that the homeowner i don't know if most people know this or not but you can hear when i'm having a conversation with you and i'm speaking the way that i would normally speak then you're hearing maybe every fifth to sixth word you're you're piecing everything together but you're not really you're not really getting everything that I'm saying, but you're getting a gist of what I'm saying. But when I'm in a house and I'm selling to a homeowner, I have to really slow it down to, to for their central nervous system, for the way that they listen and and so that they can hear everything that I have to say. And so we're going to slow it down and it's going to sound a lot like this. Yeah. So if I would if I were to go to a bar and I would speak like that, people think that I got something wrong with me. But <laughs> going into a house, yeah, they get it, they like it, they love the fact that, wow, that guy was so easy to understand. You know, he made everything so uh, easy to, to really understand what, what, what was going on in the house mm -hmm. and how he did his inspection, how he brought it back to us and the video that he brought back. So that's one of the things that we really need to to learn inside of the new modern selling system the next thing is is that top reps ask five times more questions than anybody else Ooh, and yeah. so if you happen if you feel like man maybe i'm not a top rep take all these questions and you probably think man i ask questions like crazy in the house take that times it by five and that's what a, a top rep would do mm -hmm. and we ask um, you know, we ask surface level questions, which are your situation questions. And then we're going to drill down until we're ready to ask problem oriented questions. And then we're going to drill down on those as needed until we can get solution based questions. So way, way back about 40 years ago, this book came out, maybe not quite 40 years ago, this book came out called spin selling. 
remember selling isn't new. You know, there's uh, there's people out right now and it's question based selling. It's the new thing hitting. It's like, no, they just took spin selling and they just modernized it. Yeah. And so you don't have to change the game. All you have to do is understand how the game's played today. Mm -hmm. And so we slow it down. We ask more questions. We ask different types of questions. And then we also found out that these top reps are coached more often. So mm. their sales leader or their owner is always in contact with them. They don't send them out and then ask them how they did at the end of the week. That's how most organizations do it. You know, like, well, mm. he seems to be doing well, so I'm just going to leave him alone. Well, he could be doing a lot better if you were just in contact with him or you even knew what that system was. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. No, I love that, man. And, you know, something that just came to my mind was, um, which is so relevant right now is you have two different types of people who are doing estimates, right? And, and this is the mindset thing of it in my mind is you have an order taker slash estimator, right? And then you have a sales rep, mm -hmm. right? Somebody who like, if there was a sales rep for a concrete coding company right now, listening to this podcast, he's going to be nodding his head. Like, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Totally agree with that. For those who are experienced in sales and understand you know that like when i was in sales it was the seven steps of selling or whatever right but yeah. but you know and then when i see these guys they go out and they shake hands and be like yeah sure i'm just they're gonna open the garage for you okay cool right on i'll just hop in there and i'll just make some measurements and send it off to you and then they got this like oh okay well i'll just email it bye right like there's this there's nothing there and then they wonder why they're competing with these other people who are the exact same at a low price right and that's the reality of it. It's like, how are you going to be different on so many levels with your business? Sales is so critical when it comes to all this on top of everything else that you got to build out, of course. But, you know, it's so critical understanding that that one human psychology and understanding that besides that, it is kind of a science slash process. Once you understand it, you just repeat it over and over and over because people are people and they understand right? They under, we understand each other at a deeper level. Got to get there though, yeah. right? And not be so afraid to, oh no, I have to handle this objection. Like, oh, well, I got to think about it. Oh no, what do I say? Okay, yeah, no, no problem. You know, we'll talk to you later and, you know, let me know when you're ready. Well, you <laughs> yeah. just lost that sale. I'm sorry. It's, it's game over because you're going to be following up for months. That's right. Right. And so can you kind of like tell me a little bit more about that? Like, you know, we're talking about the estimator order taker slash salesperson. And can you like, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just kind of like help through that as well a little bit, just so that the listeners can kind of understand the difference. Well, I mean, so there's different types of sales reps out there. We have what we call the talking face, the guy that just jaws it up. The sale, the homeowner doesn't have to talk much because they, they can't wait to talk. You know, the, the sales rep can't wait to sit there and just talk about how great they are and how, you know, we're number one and, and they just won't shut up in the house. And, you know, that's, that's the first one is the talking face. The next one is what we call the, uh, you know, like the order taker, the, uh, uh, you know, the guy that's going to just drop through and drop off a, an estimate, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have a lot of that. And we love those guys when they're our competitors. You know, you want to drop off the estimate and I mean, we're going to eat your lunch all day. I'm going to take that, that estimate. I'm going to use it against you. And then I'm going to sell my product because my product is twice as much. You know, when we look at, at, uh, floor coatings, we had a company out of Chicago, gives me a call, very close friend of mine. He says, I'm willing to get into this, but I'm not selling this stuff for five to $6 a square foot. He says, I absolutely not. I won't make any money. Nobody makes money at five to $6. And so we started him out at 14 and brought that selling system in. And they're, I mean, now they're up to about 17 a square foot wow. and they're still selling at 60, uh, 60 percent uh, uh, close rate. And so it's, it has nothing to do with the price. You know, we have to sell it differently. We have to bring a, a, the value and but yet when we come in with this this pricing it's part of the value is the price and so when they see this price like man it's got to be better and so they jump on it they're like man i'm gonna pay that because i know that 
over here it's going to be a gamble at five to six dollars a square i mean that's got to be just plain cheap yep. you know it's going to be a gamble if i get a decent uh install out of that but at 14 or 17 dollars a square foot i know i'm guaranteed and it comes with that type of guarantee it's better for that price so you know you have the 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 talking face you've got the the guy that's just going to drop off the estimate and then you have what we call the hitman you know the one that you have to call the police to get out of your house <laughs> and then you have the sales professional and the sales professional knows what they're doing yeah you know they they go the entire process the way that it's meant to be so if you come to top rep you know you'll hear this over and over that sales reps are lazy but i'm a champion what that means is that everybody else that comes out, they're just going to be lazy. They're going to do as little as they can to make as much as they can. Yep. And so when our sales reps come out, then they're going to do their job. We let them know that when you go out, you do your job. But not only are they doing their job, but they're being monitored. You know, they have to turn on real or they have to turn on whatever. Because there's like four or five of them out now. They have to turn those on. And it's it's recording. It's making sure that you're doing your job. And I had somebody ask me like, man, that's just, you know, even for the rep, that's just too much pressure. Do we, or do we not watch over our production staff to make sure that we don't have to do it again? Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, then why wouldn't you do the same thing with your sales rep? You pay them twice as much. You, sh you should be able to watch over them, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, that tail should not be wagging the dog. Yeah. You know, you hire a sales rep. You know, you don't bring on a partner. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. And you know that the, the other thing I've, I've been thinking about a lot too, because let's let's face it, I know for a fact that everybody that heard you say you said you started at twelve, was it? Twelve dollars a square foot? They started 14. them. At well, with them we did fourteen. 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 That's right. that's what they wanted to start it at. Yeah. And so now I know for a fact, everybody listening to this, or they're just, wow, wow, how is that even possible? How? And I just have this thing about this where there's a thing called perceived value, and there's also things called perceived indifference, mm -hmm. right? And there's also this thing where, you know, it's called uncertainty, right? And there's so many levels of this. There's, there's, are they, you know, on a scale of one to 10, are they certain about your brand, how they feel about your business? Did you, did it actually make them? feel good when you show up right are you showing up let's say you don't have a sales guy yet you're just doing the thing right all of it you show up in a rusty beater and it's not wrapped up you come out sure maybe you got a hat a logoed hat but it's all covered in dust and epoxy and you smell bad because of the stuff and you're wearing sweats right and you got stains all over your shirt <laughs> like <laughs> That's the typical contractor that most homeowners have to unfortunately deal with on an ongoing basis, which gives them this massive bad feeling. They already got a bad taste in their mouth about you and they haven't even said hi yet. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I feel like that is so critical. Like, sure, in the beginning, it is hard to get things rolling. Yeah, maybe a wrap might cost you five grand, six grand or whatever, depending on who you're dealing with, right? But you can't tell me that's not a worthy investment right? You would spend that on Facebook ads. So what's the difference, right? right? And then you're, then you're coming back going, well, I don't understand how I can't close these jobs at, you know, $8, $9, $10 even, right? It's all, it all matters how they see you when you show up. And I know you, you had brought this up in, in the, in the presentation at the summit, like don't show up with a big, huge case full of garbage and all sorts of stuff. It's probably all dirty, full of epoxy as well, yeah. right? Just trim it down. Go over to the gas station that's close by, change real quick, put something nice on, look good, smile when you arrive. Like you say, talk slow. I do struggle with that, by the way, especially after multiple coffees. Um, <laughs> you just show up and you just you shake their hand and you make them feel important. Like they have to feel like their time is also valued, right? And it's just all of it. Step at a time is so important. Every little thing along the way closes that gap more and more and more about their certainty level with you right am i wrong on that no yeah so like really at the end of the day you need if you can if you want to charge 14 dollars a square foot you have to wow that shit out of them yeah. you're going to be like whoa 
what just happened here right now, like it's a no brainer, but I don't even know what's going on. Cause I'm just so blown away by this experience. That doesn't happen. Never. Right. You have to spend the time with them. You have to bring the wow factor. You know, it's, there's so much involved in this, even when we're working up a, a client's offering, you know, if your offering doesn't look, cause I know everybody's got the, the epoxy or the, the polyaspartic polyurea, whatever they're going to use. And it all seems the same, but it's all on how you talk about it. It's how you show it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not there to save everybody else. I'm not going to sit in there and just say, well, everybody's got the same stuff. No, I'm not saving them. Yeah. And the closest I would come to that is when we're going through our, our questions that we ask, one of the questions that we ask is, Bob and Mary, I'm sure you've had a couple of companies out maybe. And they're like, yeah, we've had a couple out. Great. And I'm guessing that a lot of these, the, the products seem very similar. And they're like, yeah. And the companies are very similar. Even the pricing is similar. And they're like, yeah. So what has to be different for you to make a decision? Do you mind if I ask you? And they'll look at you and they're like, and they'll come out with that answer. Mm -hmm. And you beat that dead horse for the next 45 minutes. <laughs> it's pretty amazing how open-ended questions can really change the game when it comes to having a conversation with somebody really, right? It doesn't matter if it's trying to pick up somebody at a bar or just trying to close a deal, right? Having open-ended questions is so, so, so important, right? Like it, instead, if I said it the other way, be like, would it be better for you if I did something different? and you could like work with us, you're gonna say no, or yes, I guess. But like, it doesn't open up the conversation, right? Cause they don't understand what you're saying, but like, I love the way you put that out there, right? It's just so, so important. I don't know, it just, can you kind of sort of, I know we have like a certain amount of time here. So quickly kind of just enlighten us a little bit about how the whole process in, in the way you've been teaching everyone how the whole process would be right from when they get a lead to the end. Do you think that we'd have time for that? Yeah. I mean, I, we can kind of run through this. And so when that lead comes in and, and here's what I find with so many of these smaller organizations is that lead comes in, they hand it to a sales rep. That should never, ever happen. Mm -hmm. That sales rep gets an appointment. They do not get a lead. So that comes in, you set the appointment you let that uh, sales rep know when that appointment is and when they need to be there. So that gets put on their calendar. That sales rep would go out and when they when they park, whether they park in the driveway or park on the, the street, it's not that big a deal, but they should be out of their car within 30 seconds. We all have these ring doorbells now. And so as soon as it comes up, my my even my watch now goes off when uh, when FedEx gets here. And so you have to get out of the car and you're ready to go. You should have a little swagger to you. You know, we don't need the Detroit lean, but we, you know, we got a little swagger going and we get up to the, uh, the house and knock on the door, take some steps back, uh, try to be less threatening when they open uh, that door. Now with concrete coatings, they may also be waiting for you in the garage. Yeah. So, you know, you come in and, and, uh, try to use their first name, not their last name. You know, way back in the day, it was, was proper to use a last name anymore. They're just going to give you that. Well, that's my father, you know? Yeah. yeah. We just want to say, Hey, Bob. Yeah, Bob. My name's Chuck. I'm with ABC coatings. I'm here for our two o'clock appointment is, is now it's still a good time to meet with me for the next, you know, 45 to, to 60 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We've got that time. Great. Is it okay where I park? Yeah. 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 Everybody's in. Or maybe they'll look at you and say, yeah, you're fine. The wife went to, uh, went to the store. You guys are going to be gone by the time she gets back. Now we have a one leg. We have to know how to deal with that. So, you know, once that, that uh, we know that everybody's in the house, then we go into a more of a survey. Um, you know, we're going to ask certain questions so that we know how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what we call the help me sell me survey. And uh, so we're going to ask those questions. We're going to get into the inspection. Now they should have a, an inspection pouch. Um, you can get them at Lowe's Home Depot and, you know, get the, uh, get the big Velcro ones that'll slide down 
and it'll start, you know, as you're walking around, you, you have everything you need. The other thing that I would suggest is using a fat max tape measure. If you pull out a digital measuring device, for whatever reason, it is, it's seen as negative from a homeowner. Now, people will say, nah, come on, it's technology. Homeowners don't like to see technology. Mm-hmm. You know, they think, well, if you had all this cool technology, you could have emailed me a quote. 100%. Yeah. Except for one extenuating circumstance when they have about 70 years of crap in the garage and you can't see wall to wall. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> right? Um, but, I'm loving this, man. Continue. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. But uh, you're exactly right. And so long story short, we we get into the inspection. We use that pouch because it's a per- perception, just like you were talking about. It's, you know, you're perceived as the expert. The other thing that we do that mo- that nobody does is what we call an inspection video. I know that the guy's standing right behind me, but remember, this is a show. You know, Bob, what I'm going to do now, or Bob and Mary, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my inspection video so that I can send this back to production so that we can measure twice and cut once. And while they're behind me, I'm explaining the entire process as to what needs to be done on this floor. All I'm doing is wowing the people standing behind me. Nobody's actually going to get this video. That is so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well thought out. Guys, listen to this. Do it. Trust me, it'll work. It it does work. We have uh, countless um, coatings companies that are already raising their prices like crazy because they're seeing how, how easy this really is once they understand the process and how to do it. Yeah. Um, and then from here, we're going to go right into the presentation. And you have to have a well thought out presentation to show the homeowner all the way to where you're actually showing the process on how that coding is going to go down. Is that on paper or digital? It's all digital. We use engage. Okay. Oh, okay. That's and good. Um, I will tell you that if you do get engaged and um, if you have either you're at one of our events uh, or you're a client, we give that template to you. You know, so many people are like, Oh, it's $10,000 for us. We'll give it to you. We have no problem with that. Engage. Hey, I'm going to look into that. I've never heard of that before, actually. Yeah, engage, engage is spelled with an I. Um, I-N-G-A-G-E. Um, and it is like the newest presentation technology out right now. Okay. Um, very, very cool. And you, as a sales leader or an owner, you can actually, there's analytics where you can see if your sales reps are using it, how long they're on every page. I mean, just like Rilla, we double check everybody's work. Mm. You know, people like Chuck, man, you're building robots. Trust me, if I could, I would. (laughs) (laughs) No doubt, eh? Uh, Okay, so I'm telling you that I want you to be a robot in the house. (laughs) So, okay, so we've gone through, okay, so you show them the presentation. Um, What happens now? So right after the presentation, now it's time to jump into the uh, the price presentation. And whether you have a good, better, best, which most of our, our coatings organizations do have a good, better, best. And we even uh, help them to understand how to lay that out so it doesn't just look like the same offer everybody else does. And then we do what we call price engineering. So how we put the price on the bottom of the page, we still write it in, even though we are 100%. We like to say we're paperless, except for our contract or the uh, the estimate. Our contract's even digital. But if you're going to um, to give them an estimate, write it out. Because you, I promise you, you'll have a 10% higher close rate if you write it on a piece of paper than if you are too lazy and you turn it around on an iPad and say, okay, there's your there's your price. And uh, so we're going to lay it out for the homeowner. If we have big offers, we're going to do a retail. We're going to bring it down on that, whatever that offer is, to our 30-day price. And when we give it that 30-day price, we're going to give a, we're going to give one oper- option for financing. Don't do this thing where you give them three finance options. You know, you're going to get, I need to think about is what's going to happen there. Yeah, but we give you know. them a five-year um payment option. And from there, that's all we're mentioning. They can see the price of the job at the 30 day, 
but we're talking about how much it'll be for their monthly investment. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to afford 178 a month, uh, wouldn't you? You know, over the next 30 days. And they're like, yeah, perfect. Yeah. And let's, let's face it guys. And <clears throat> I get, I get pushed back on this, but I really am. I truly do believe that this is the case because it's the same thing that I do. I don't know. Maybe I'm just different, but I mean, I went and bought a couch. It was three grand. Guess what I did? I financed it. Why would I want to put it on my credit card at 25% interest or whatever? Right. right? I could have, I could have even paid cash for it, but that's my cash. That's right. Why wouldn't I use someone else's money? So right. it cost me, I think their admin fee was $150. So what? That's way less than any other interest rate that you would accumulate or interest that you'd accumulate on the couch if you did it through your credit card, right? And yep. like, why would you want to give up your cash? You could actually use that for something else more important to you, right? Like, guys, like this is how people think. This is a capitalist society. This is what we do. We all use this, these products, these credit products in a smart way because it just makes sense. And I don't care if it's, okay, there, there are some extenuating circumstances, of course, like the... The higher end people, like the, you know, the richer people, you know, maybe they're just doing rentals and they have the money already sitting there just because it's part of what they're going to do for their project. That's different. But when you have Joe Blow coming, you know, you go see Joe Blow, right? And they're the ones that are just like, they see your ad for the very first time and they've had a little bit of experience in this because they understand a little bit of it. You go and show up. You don't know how much money they make, guys. You don't. You don't know where they're at. Really. Right. Unless you're really, really good at your market. And you know everywhere where they are, right? Um, but the truth is, is if you don't give them an option, then that's just one more no. It really is, right? Because you're giving them, you're not overwhelming them in this case, which I really love that you did there, Chuck, because you're not giving them 17 different financing options. You're giving them one that makes sense to everyone. And it really does. It does make sense, right? Low interest or no interest or whatever it's going to be. It just makes sense, right? And if you're worried about, well, the finance company takes a chunk, well, then you're definitely not charging enough. Right. Right. So it all works together, guys, you know, and super important. Anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of share that. But uh, so you offer the financing, then what happens next? What if I have like, um, I got to think about it still. So now you have to know the closing roadmap and mm -hmm. the closing roadmap. We came out with this about us. Uh, maybe nine, 10 years ago. And now all of the large organizations use it because it's so easy to use and it works you through it based on that customer. We, you know, where is it that they're going to lead me? Are they going to go straight to, I need to think about it. Hey, I totally get it. I understand. You know, Rudy, that's why we give you 30 days, man. You'd, you'd be able to make that decision within the next 30 days. Right. And they're like, yeah, great. And is this the system that that you want in on your uh, concrete and they're like yeah and are we the company that you trust to do that right the first time there we go of course yeah so i'm guessing that the the when that time comes the only thing that's going to stand between you and i is it's going to be the money right and they're like of course yeah all right so typically when it comes down to the money it's one of three things it's either going to be value, you don't see paying what we're asking, or it's affordability, you just don't know where that money's going to come from. Or maybe it's timing. You're waiting on a tax return or a bonus to go ahead and get that new floor. You know, which is it for you? We're going to work on that. that. I got one more to add to that. Okay. What am I going to do with the 20 years of crap in my garage? Because I'm 47 years old. Oh, great. Did I tell everybody? Okay, I did. <laughs> but I don't want to like, do it myself there are some people who like yeah well i want to go through it and you know this well that's a perfect time to do it right but like did that problem get solved do you have something involved in your business that can help them solve that for real like yeah we got well do we just send them a link to a pod or a u-haul or whatever well no 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 why don't you do it for them why don't you do the logistics of that for them say no no we got you covered we'll get a u-haul here blah 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 blah, blah. you're going to put it as a line item on your invoice obviously don't take the hit on that, although you could use it as leverage, right? But right. you know what I'm saying? Like there, there's yeah. this one piece that a lot of people, they just refuse to, not everyone, but like a lot of companies refuse to go there because logistically they just have a hard time trying to sort it out. It's no different than building an SOP or system in your business. Once you sort it out, once you figure it out and you get it done, it's done. 
right? And it's just easy for you after that, right? That's in my opinion, that's one way. And it's not a bad question to ask either. Like, I understand you want to think about it. Number four, what are you doing with, by the way, that should have been a question asked a long time ago, but you know, yep. what are you going to do with all the stuff in your garage? Do you have, right. do you have like a solution for that? Right? And you know, I, here's, I'm going to uh, suggest that you don't give it away right away. Use that as mm. a selling tool, even though you yep. intend on giving it to them, put a value behind that. I see so many companies like, oh yeah, yeah. And just so you know, we're going to go ahead and bring a rubber wheeled trailer. You can put everything into it, or I'm going to bring a pod. You can put everything into it. Now put a value behind this thing. Let them know that this thing is $1,200 or whatever you want to put on it. And you know what, if, if we can get this thing all done, I'm, I'm willing to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give this thing to you. I know I'm going to take heat when I get back, but I'm going to go ahead and give this thing to you because I don't want you just throwing all that stuff in the yard. hundred percent without lifting a finger, right? Or they yeah. could put it in themselves or they can hire movers or we can do it for them. They're fully insured. Yeah. Right. I mean, it just, in my mind, it just makes sense to me. Right. Right. Cause like, if you're going to be that company, that's high level like that, they're looking for somebody who is going to take care of them. You're the guide, they're the hero, not the other way around. So you're the Yoda, they're Luke Skywalker, right? And they don't want to lift a finger. They don't want to deal with this. That's why they're paying you, right? So we're in the business of pro solving problems, are we not? Mm -hmm. We're a customer service concrete coating company that just happens to coat garage floors. That's right. Right? And so going through this whole sales process is super important. And I keep interrupting you, but I, we're almost done through the end of the whole sales process. But, you know, so you were at the think about it part of it. We went through that. What happens now? You well, I mean, it, it's being able to go the distance with the homeowner. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that case, if, if it's, you know, value, we're going to stair step them up. Now, what most sales reps would do is start justifying their price. Oh, I mean, I told you about the the warranty, right? You, you remember the warranty and. Like, no, I just forgot about it that last 10 minutes, you know? So you have to step them up. So before I came out, how much, how much did you think this would cost? You know, I don't know how many times we've heard $1,200, you know? And so we need to step them up. So after I came and I went through all the, the upgrades and, and how this is all done and the fact that, you know, how we're going to grind your, uh, the, the floor down and then get into the cracks. Now, now where are you? You know, there's a saying that a confused rep is a rich rep. And because if all I do is I give you scripts and you're regurgitating scripts, your face never changes. <laughs> I want you to, as you're going through this, to look confused because you're asking questions the whole yeah. time. You know, people say, oh, you need to educate the homeowner. You need to the homeowner to educate you more than you educate the homeowner. And what you're trying to get them to educate you on is the problem. Yeah. What, yeah. what is the problem, especially with concrete coatings? It could be anything. What is that? Because when they tell you why they want it, that's usually not the underlying. That's the obvious reason. But there's some there's some underlying stuff that we need to get. And so, again, a confused rep. So so let me ask you. You know, you can see I'm pulling my face. Let me ask you and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, so a confused rep is a rich rep. Um, you know, this is all stuff that we teach and train, while, whether it's at top rep or inside of our coaching. You know, we will take you through the entire process and we train the trainer. We want, whether you have a sales leader or you, you're the owner, we want to train you so that when we leave or when we're done training, that you know how to train your people. You know, it's, we, we have, you know, certain packages where there's group coaching, stuff like that, that'll bring you back to the basics. But ultimately I want you to be able to sustain the training that we give you. And that's why we are as big as we are in the industry. I love that man so much. And you know what? I think we're going to wrap it up here though, but um, I'll tell you what though, give me the link to the training if you can, please. And then yeah. I have referred a couple clients to your website, but I wasn't quite sure which one to send them to. So I just said, we'll just go onto their website. But if you provide me a link after this call, what I'll do is um, once we get this thing published, I'll just place it right on there. And it's on YouTube, on Spotify, Apple, all that stuff. So it'll all be there. And yeah. then uh, anybody's listening to this, if you're interested, guys, listen, I got to tell you, 
this guy knows what he's talking about and he wouldn't have a company like this if it didn't work. Like he's huge guys, Thank right? You. He's huge to help you guys out. And that's why I brought him on board because this is the one thing, the one piece I think that a lot of people struggle with. And I really just want to get you guys out of that $5 to $6 a square foot mode. That mindset needs to shift dramatically. If you guys are going to profit from this industry, right? There's a, and, and I'm going to leave off with this. There is a lot of guys who are just one sh one one man shows doing five dollars a square foot and might actually be able to survive off that and he's happy fine you guys got to stop looking at each other because when you start looking at each other you're just going to try to compare each other and you're just going to be in like this big toilet bowl and you're all going to flush yourselves down the toilet that's right you got to stop thinking about that it's important to know your competitors 100 percent. but you got to stop worrying about them and start worrying about you and what you're going to do for your customer Amen. right right and so we're going to leave off with that, but I want to ask you one more question because I think that this will be the most memorable one. When a lead comes in, what is the max amount of time? Oh, I just did it. What's the max amount of time that you need to call them? 30 seconds. I love it. It's when that lead comes in. I mean, it, that is solid gold. You paid an amazing amount of money to get that lead. And then it sits there like, oh, the admin will get it when she comes in. I'm grabbing it. If nobody else is grabbing it, I'm grabbing it and calling it. Uh, because you have literally have 30 seconds to five minutes. Anything over five minutes, you might as well just throw it in the trash. Yeah. And why do you think that is, do you think? Well, most of what we get, even when you say, oh, they, you know, they they got on our website and they filled out our form. Yeah, they got on five others too, just so you know. And those folks, they did their job. They got or one or two of them went ahead and called, booked the estimate. Well, now they're like, well, we don't need any more. We got two coming out. We don't we don't need you coming out yep. because you decided that uh, a, a an email was more important or something else. The most important thing in your business is the leads that come through the front door. Treat them like gold. 100 percent. And the other thing I think, too, is. You them filling out that form. It's just an, one of 400 things they got to do that day. It was just on their list or they saw the ad and like, oh yeah, I wanted to do that. Right. And then they're off taking their kids to school. They got to do this, change diapers or whatever it is, go to work. And then you try to call them at 10 AM or, or 11 AM. Right. Well, they're working they're, You know, that's why you got to text them and email them and call them, and leave voicemails. Right. All that kind of stuff. But anyway, though, it's super, super critical. And when you get them within that 30 seconds, they're still kind of like, they just finished that. And when you call them, that's not a sign of desperation. That is 100% customer service. And that's I can tell you, I've got feedback from clients who do this. They will tell you, if you actually talk to them, they will tell you that the customer is so shocked. They're like, wow, I just filled that out. That is amazing. Right? I actually use auto dialers. And so it's when that lead comes in, it goes into an automated system called Go High Level. And it dials immediately. So you better have that headset on. Because we don't need our callers calling anybody. It calls automatically. And um, the auto dialers, as long as you're not doing predictive dialing, you're okay. But all it is, all we use it for is speed to lead. So when that thing comes in, I mean, as soon as they're hitting submit, their phone's ringing. That's how fast these auto dialers are. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Chuck, for uh, coming on to this podcast, man. I think that a lot of people are going to have a lot of value with this. And again, you know, if you guys are interested in really getting some good, solid coaching and training, Chuck is the man. Chuck is the man that, and he's he's in this coding business now, and he's not going anywhere. So you're going to be seeing him around. And, you know, the ones who are actually willing to get coaching and willing to get training to help with the sales process, whether it's you or a salesperson, they're the ones that are going to be winning in this game, guys. They're the ones that are going to be charging $12, 14 $17 a square foot. Yeah. Now think about that for a while and tell me if his course isn't worth it, right? So anyways, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, I actually look forward to meeting you in person. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. All right, man. Take care.